<laughs> Thanks to Ed Yesho uh, and, and you guys here on the Green County Committee for soldiering on. I will apologize for being about 10 minutes later than I would have been, but Jane Dittmar single-handedly killed the 29 bypass, so that was it. <laughs> oh, I, got, I want to start out with some good news. It's, it's easy um, to find bad news, and, uh, and, and the bad news often grabs the headlines, and uh, that's human nature, I think, but I want to, I want to tell you some good news. About, about 10 days ago, uh, Ms. Dittmar's campaign uh, announced that the Democrat uh, Congressional Committee had targeted the 5th District of Virginia uh, to spend extra money and resources, and I, that, I, I heard that and I got excited, and uh, people asked me, what's wrong with you, Tom? Um, and there were lots of things. <laughs> They didn't give me enough time. <laughs> but uh, I got excited and I thought of a guy named Lewis Burwell Puller Jr. Anybody familiar with a Virginian named Chesty Puller? Got a Marine here. So they told us, yeah, I was, Chesty Puller's worth clapping for in and of himself. They told us the Democrats had picked out this race and Jane Dittmar sent in a release and she said, we'll be coming from every direction. It reminded me of what General Puller said when they informed him in Korea. General Puller, bad news, we're surrounded. And he said, bad news, hell, that's good news. Now we can shoot the sons of a gun in every direction. <laughs> I'll tell you that in 2011, I had the honor of running for a seat that was going to be one of the decisive seats on whether or not Republicans held the majority of the Virginia Senate. And we were outspent in, a, in an R plus 7 district, $1.2 million to 560000 And so in a district that usually goes R plus 7, we won by 17. Um, and this time, and this time, the way I see it, uh, every dollar they spend here is a dollar they're wasting. But I take solace in the fact that if we know that Democrats are good at anything consistently and perpetually, it's wasting money. And therefore, bring it on, because on November 8th, we're going to be successful and we're going to win in the 5th district. And we're going to be successful and we're going to win because we're right on the issues. Issue after issue after issue on apples to apples comparisons. We have a record and Jane Dittmar has a record. And we will stand on our record against her record and the voters will see the records and they will select the record that has a demonstrated history of providing jobs and opportunity and recognize that Ronald Reagan was right when he has said the eight most frightening words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. And recognize that individuals can sometimes make pretty darn good decisions on their own behalf. And what are the apples to apples comparisons? During Ms. Didmar's two years on the, on the Outlaw County Board of Supervisors, <clears throat> Two prominent national companies, both breweries, Ballast Point Brewery from San Diego, California, and the Schutz Brewery from Seattle, Washington, both decided they wanted to expand east of the Mississippi, and both picked out Albemarle County, Virginia. And between the two, they were looking at about 248 jobs, and those jobs had benefits, and the average educational attainment was a high school diploma. And so we're looking at salary positions with benefits for people who are really in the wheelhouse of where our unemployment problem lies. And three times, three times count them on tape, Jane Dittmar said, we just aren't ready for those jobs. Now, the other day at the debate, she tried to have her cake and eat it too because she said, well, we weren't ready for those jobs, but they went to Roanoke, and that means that people in Franklin and Bedford in the 5th District can have those jobs. That's kind of like having a congressman that says, well, Virginia's not ready for those jobs, but they went to North Carolina, so at least they're in the United States. I want to fight for the 5th District. And the, and, the, and the similar comparison that comes up is when Hardywood Brewery decided that it was going to leave Richmond and they wanted the locality to move to invest about $100 million in capital and create nearly 100 jobs, and they decided to come to my state senate district, and instead of finding an excuse to say no, we found a way to get to yes. Jane Dittmar found excuse after excuse after excuse to say no and found a way to get to, we found a way to get to yes. And that's only the beginning. We had the opportunity to debate Ms. Dittmar last year in Fluvanna County. We had no idea that we'd be running against her. We had no idea that Robert Hur was retiring. And the question was raised, how do we deal with and defeat radical Islam, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS? And Ms. Dittmar's response was as follows. Well, they just don't know how nice we Americans are. <laughs> Not making this up. Couldn't make this up. In fact, we're the best nation in the world. We do so many things for them and other people. Why our military, they distribute more aid than any other military in the world. So I believe 
that what we need is an aggressive PR campaign. And if we do that, we can defeat Islam, radical Islam within just a few years. Folks, it would be funny if it weren't so darn frightening. That is actually what Ms. Dittmar believes. Now, having worn the uniform in the United States and served abroad and seen places in the world where people, because they had a different last name or spoke the same language with a different dialect or worshipped on a different day of the week, would stack bodies like cordwood, having been a prosecutor and, and worked a, a murder case where someone was shot by their spouse because they refused to take down Christmas ornaments, I know the reality is that in this world there is evil. And you will never defeat or solve a problem until you can first identify the problem. And Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and Jane Dittmar aren't willing to look evil in the eyes and call it what it is. And as a result, the JV team has the upper hand. And for the 100, 435th% of control that I'll have in the, in the United States Congress, I promise that we will look that enemy in the eye, identify that enemy, and aggressively engage and destroy that enemy, and we'll do that with the help of Donald J. Trump. <laughs> now, every once in a while, um, every once in a while people ask me how the race is going, every once in a while is in every day. And I tell them it's great, we're gonna win. I feel great about it. I really, really, really do. We're up on TV. Our ad was up for two days. It had more YouTube views than Ms. Dittmar's two ads had after three weeks and two days. People are talking. Things are happening. If you drive this district from one end to the other, the visible, palpable, tangible signs say that we're winning. We're going to win. And that's an amazing, amazing honor. And it's an overwhelming thing when you think about serving in a seat that's been occupied by the likes of Virgil Goode. And, and it's really, really, really humbling when you think that Thomas Jefferson lived in the fifth. Patrick Henry retired in the 5th, and the first congressman from the 5th was a man named James Madison. It's really humbling. But I'm going to tell you that if I could flip a switch right now, and the switch said win or lose, I would gladly turn it to lose if I knew we could ensure that Donald Trump would win the White House. The United States Congress, as important as it is, means nothing compared to to the role of the president specifically and particularly as it relates to the appointment of justices to the United States Supreme Court. I promise you, and I know this with every fiber of my being, A rating, Jane Dittmar, F rating from the NRA, that the Second Amendment as an individual right hangs in the balance, shifting solely on the appointment of the next one justice. The five to four majority that said that the Second Amendment was an individual guarantee to the right to keep and bear arms died when Antonin Scalia died. And it goes beyond that. It goes to the further complete gutting of the Establishment Clause that guarantees the freedom of religion. It goes to our own civil liberties and what expectations we have as it relates to the government inserting itself into our privacy and our lives. And so I will tell you, and I say this again and again and again, and if you only hear one thing that I say this whole time, understand this. I can win the 5th District without Donald Trump. But Donald Trump can't win Virginia without the 5th District. And I am begging you, I am imploring you, everybody here. You. I, I hate preaching to the choir, but by gosh, this is the pulpit and I'm going to preach. Okay? If you're here, you care enough to be here. You got out of bed. You made a decision. This is where you're going to spend your day. God bless you. You are already converted. But we will win this race because you will go find your neighbors and you will put your hand on their shoulder and say, do you have a couple of minutes? Because I want to tell you why it's important that we elect Donald J. Trump, the next president of the United States. There ain't no TV ad, nor radio, nor piece of mail as powerful as a neighbor taking time to say, this is what it means to me. And I hope you care and I hope you get engaged. So I will tell you that if, if, if God hits the off button on the, road, on the road on the way out of here and my life is over, I've been blessed and blessed and blessed and re-blessed. And if we have the opportunity to serve, that will be a wonderful blessing. And I promise you this, I'll do everything that I said I was going to do to the best of my ability to do it. I won't break that compact with you, but far more important, Far more important is that we stay engaged and that we work as hard as each one of us can to get Donald Trump elected so that we can keep what our founders gave us and make America great again. God bless you all.
One of these days, Tom's going to come out of his shell. Let's hear it for Senator Tom Garrett one more time. And remember what Ed the End Show said about 20 plus 10. If each one of you call 20 of your friends who you know you can talk to and just ask them so gently to call 10 of their friends, then you've accomplished what Tom was just talking about.